Hey guys, it's Ed with another installment of our Johnny 5 build series. Today, we'll be making his mid-torso pivot joint and making some modifications to this off-the-shelf electric linear actuator. The electric ram they used for the movie robots is very hard to find, very expensive, and not that great. So what we and a lot of the other builders are doing is getting a modern replacement with the same specs and just building a facade of the original style. And this will snap into there a piece of PVC on it. And then Abom is one of the collaborators. He's making the other end piece of it. And that will mesh with a pin to move his lower torso up and down like that. As I said, this lower actuator mount was my first ever five axis part. It took so much longer than I expected to program, like a solid day and a half of screwing around. Throughout that whole programming process, I was like, it's not worth it, it's not worth it. I could just make it on a, on a three axis and a couple setups. But then as soon as I start making the part completely clicked, it was completely worth it and gonna make as many parts on the five axis going forward as possible. As is often the case, round stock ended up being more available and better priced than trying to find a square piece that worked out well. I think we had the piece on hand even, so I just cut off a chunk of it and cut a dovetail into the end of the stock to hold it in this fifth axis D22 dovetail vise. And for that, I made a parametric dovetail CAD cam file to make it super easy to cut a dovetail this size on any round or rectangular piece of stock. Card here to Johnny Five's page on the NYC CNC site where you can download that and give it a try. For this kind of part, I've found it helpful to make a containment box or a containment cube that I can parametrically space off of the vise to control how close my part will come to the vise. And that just gives me a rectangle at all orientations to click for containment. And even though this was my first part, I decided to go hard and try for a tabbing off operation. And when doing this, order of operations is really important. You have to think through how you can leave as much material there until last and work your way toward the tab area, especially for roughing operations. You can come back through later and take really light finishing passes. Still got a little bit of chatter, but overall it looks great. Most importantly, it passed the rite of passage flick test, five axis tab that all the Instagram peeps do. Yeah, that one right there. Next up, moving on to the mid-torso, and you guys will get a bit of a sneak peek here of our upcoming version 2 mod vices, which are easily compatible with soft jaws. Making some aluminum bearing cage, you lurking in the background? <laughs> <laughs> Next up for these bearing cages, we did some lathe-on mill on the TM3P. After doing all the internal work, I slotted these parts out and knocked them loose with a hammer, as I've been doing more and more lately. It's just it's a great workflow for these onesie-twosie kind of pieces, and then use those soft jaws to clean up the backside. For these pivot bushings on the inside, I started with raw two inch round bar, cut soft jaws for those, and did them almost as if they were lathe parts, practicing for our Haas ST20 that gets here like next week. Did all the mill work on those and then parted those off using a slitting saw and chamfered the back of those off camera on the Imco lathe. This upper fork portion is all mild steel. First up, slotting out this base plate from quarter inch on the 1100M Plus using a quarter inch Lakeshore Carbide fire plug rougher. For all of the eighth inch parts on this, I did something a little bit adventurous. Probably wouldn't do it again, but it worked. I modeled my entire setup in Fusion, which allowed me to quickly plasma cut out all of my mounting holes around the parts, and used some laser cut acrylic as a sacrificial backer to allow me to cut and drill all the way through the bottom of the part without damaging the fixture plate. Then lastly, for the mid torso, we made this upper bearing cage part out of aluminum. Next up, another aluminum part that I thought was pretty neat, um, the stiffening bar for his mid-torso actuator mounting point. After roughing out with the shear hog, I contoured this 45 degree face using multiple steps with a four flute chamfer mill and chamfered all of the angled counter bore holes with a scallop tool path and a ball nose end mill. Similar to how I did the eighth inch 
steel plate pieces on the mid torso. I cut out these eighth inch aluminum plates using the same sort of direct bolt down to the fixture plate through some sacrificial acrylic and slotting the parts out. These G-shaped plates form the lower mounting point of the mid torso's parallel mechanism. And last up, I made these little mounting blocks also on the UMC uh, because they have lots of odd angled faces and tapped holes, but doing it in one op and tabbing off made them easy peasy. All right, now assembling all of the parts that we built up to this point for Johnny Five's mid torso, starting with the shaft made by one of our first collaborators, Andrew at Ansonia Manufacturing, one of the guys that John met on the NTMA tour in Europe. He knows it's for his own good. It looks really good. Yeah. Is there powder coated? Yeah. Painted. Powder coated. Love it. Printed? Mm-hmm. Tiny belt? Yeah. Sweet. I print those a lot. They, they come out great. I keep looking at parts now and thinking, can these be done on a live tool blade? <laughs> like no parts. <laughs> Always a good idea on assemblies like this to leave fasteners loose until the last possible moment, just so things can go together freely. I've done for you. Come on. I can fit my hand in here. I don't need to use that. Like I have these big meaty claws. Yep, it's gonna be a lot easier for this group. Told ya. But you won't That's be able to do it. That's the right one. Care for the comments? La 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 la. It got a sex change. What is it? I liked your blonde hair one time. <laughs> that does not want to fit in there. Period. That happens sometimes. Or I can just yell into the camera with a vacuum in the background. It's a little cam for a reed switch to keep track of the position, kind of like an encoder. There will be a screw on it at some point, but right now I don't have that. So yeah, it just clicks the switch. And a uh, timing belt for drive, motor, pulley, do ollie, somewhere in that vicinity. And No, we don't. In an ideal world, we would have all the parts and we could put the little clip on there, but I forgot to order that, so this is where we're at. Next up, we'll give you guys a better look at some of those collab parts you saw us unbox and start to put some of those assemblies together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.